and welcome back to the first segment of our show this morning. We have been joined on set by George Maivet. He is a representative of the Belize Peace Movement. And as we mentioned prior to the commercial break, our first discussion this morning will be the topic of the ICG from the perspective of the Belize Peace Movement. And of course, it falls within the context of the date actually being set for referendum and what the position of the BPM is going forward. Good morning, Mr. Maivet. Uh, pleasant good morning, guys. Good morning, Belize. Um, it has been more than a pleasure to be invited here. I have to apologize for the fact that this morning I'm flying solo. Mm -hmm. um, normally I'm accompanied by some other person. Mm -hmm. um, the last time we had Major Jones and I think Parker Smith, mm -hmm. we tried to get people, but you know, it's the weekend after the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we understand that. The issue of Goma becomes per uh, pertinent, I guess. Certainly, certainly. <laughs> but um, yeah, certainly to the point of the ICJ, um, this is the 11.9 hour. Mm -hmm. um, what a lot of people don't know is that I also do poetry on the side. Mm -hmm. People see me as a scientist. <laughs> and actually, I wrote a poem called Why the Rose Star? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let me ask you the question, and then you go into your, your recital of the, the stanzas. Why the Rose Star? Well, not from our side. Mm -hmm. the, the Guatemalans in, I believe, 1938, mm -hmm produced 6,000 copies of, quote unquote, the White Book. Mm -hmm. And the White Book was essentially a treatise on Belize is for us. And this is the 505 justification as to why Belize is for us. So there has been conditioning. Um, there has been information to justify um, their side of it. We are saying this is, this referendum is really 1798 2.0. Mm -hmm. This is an existential issue for us, and we cannot be too careful. I have heard um, utterances, including from the Prime Minister, that has basically said, enough is enough, you have gotten enough information. My view as a scientist is, well, what criteria are you using mm -hmm. to decide that we have had enough? I would say that we have not. Um, one of the accompaniments of the conversation on the ICJ has been, to a large extent, it's a kind of liaring type conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you look at it in terms of discipline, what should accompany this is the discipline of management. Mm -hmm. Because in management, it basically says that if you are embarking on a project, and this is really a project, Mm -hmm. But it's just not another project. It's the ultimate project. There's no, there's no coming back once you have mm -hmm. made a decision to go. And so what you're looking at is your indicators of success. And so for us, if our population is not in an informed position to make a decision of yeah or nay, mm -hmm. then we would have failed from, at least from the standpoint of the Belize Peace Movement. Mm -hmm. So for me and for the Belize Peace, Peace Movement, we believe that, well, more time is needed, one. Two, our position on the referendum is really ideally there should be none. Mm -hmm. Because in our view, the compromise mm -hmm. as is being presented to Belizeans, including the wording of the compromise of any and all claims mm -hmm. is too broad. We're being set up. Um, we have enough justification to show that that is not a winning formula. Can, can I go back though to, to something that kind of gets, it's kind of a, a sticky topic. This whole argument as to what Belizeans, where Belizeans are, whether or not we need more information, whether or not we have enough information, isn't that an unfair marking stick because it's like heaven and hell. We won't know until afterwards. I mean, there's no way for either side to scientifically see whether or not the Belizean people have enough information or have too little information. I vehemently disagree with you, Kevin. Correct me. I love being corrected. And I, Go ahead. I disagree with you because there's something called sampling. Mm -hmm. You could test 
the fitness of people. You could test whether or not people have been getting information. You could test in what position they are. And I will tell you that um, certainly in terms of our experiences from the Bleeds Peace Movement standpoint, um, we have been invited to make presentations in a number of forums, such as this one. We have also been invited by uh, people from a kind of structured work environment. Mm -hmm. We have been to BL, we have been to uh, some of the high schools, we have been to, uh, for example, the, uh, let me try and get this right, we have been to the PUC, we have been all over. Mm -hmm. But when you speak to John Q. Public on the street, who is outside of a structured work environment, you get a feedback that, I am confused, we don't know enough. Mm -hmm. And so to your point, Kevin, that um, people will be responding whether or not they are prepared or not. And in my view, in my humble opinion, I don't think that the majority of people are in a position to make an informed decision. And we can measure that. You can do a survey just like how you can do a survey to say, how are you going to vote? Will it be yeah or nay? You can, you can construct a survey to find out where people are nationally. Well, how many mm -hmm. surveys have the mm -hmm. Be Bleeds Progressive Movement done mm -hmm. to kind of gauge this? Zero. Zero? Zero. Um, our basically, um, we rely on, I guess, other people to do these surveys. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that there has been any scientific survey that I have seen recently. I've listened to Lewis Wade. I've actually done my own informal survey. Mm -hmm. um, about two weeks ago, a very, very prominent Belizean came out and said, I am no to the ICJ. I am yes to the ICJ. Sorry. Let me flip that. I am yes to the ICJ. Actually, there were a flood of responses. Mm -hmm. When I did the maths of it, basically, 74% of the respondents were basically saying, no, sir. It should be a no. Mm -hmm. This is not where we go with this. About 16% was saying, yes, we are with you. Mm -hmm. And I believe 10% was saying, well, we're kind of on the fence. We don't know. Point is that when you look at other metrics, um, uh, CREM has done its own kind of survey. Mm -hmm. I don't know how robust it is scientifically. Well, that's, that, but, that is always a question. Mm -hmm. you, you, could, know. you could pull any number of persons based on mm -hmm. a demography per se, mm -hmm. but if it's not a scientific survey that is being done, mm -hmm. then how do you qualify mm -hmm. any of the responses that come out well, of it? Well, if it's not scientific, that does not make it invalid, though. Mm -hmm. In the absence of anything else, mm -hmm. the one I mind is king in the kingdom of the blind. Mm -hmm. And so in the absence of any structured scientific survey, then we have to rely on the indicators that we have. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the CREM survey, the CREM survey is also saying uh, three things. One, there are much more people saying no than yes. Two, there's a significant amount of people that are saying we're not committed. But my I, question I, is, the, if you forgive me, and I, and I, and I hate to... to have to take this position, but how do we know or ensure that that particular survey, for instance, was done objectively? Well, when, we don't. When, when perhaps the media house itself has been putting forward its own agenda? It's just an honest question. Well, I listen to the WUB. The, my favorite shows are OIE, WUB, and Lewis Wade Plus TV in the morning show. Um, and essentially, Moses has gone to great lengths mm -hmm. to basically say, and if, if you track what they're doing, the, the march that they did through Belize in terms of these Wednesday night uh, conversations mm -hmm. has been, we are not saying yes or no. We are allowing people to speak. Mm -hmm. And the script that we're getting from people is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so whether or not you think that it is scientific or semi-scientific, um, I know that they have had people on their show that has basically said, this is what the data is saying to us. 
Mm -hmm. And so I don't know that it is publishable, but I think that it is, I would say it's probably semi-scientific. Can mm -hmm. I, can I, and, and, and I, I want to put one final brush on Isani's point, because I also have a little bit of experience in social science. Mm -hmm. One of the important things about any survey, which makes it worth any sort of weight, mm -hmm. is controls. Mm -hmm. Because you can completely misinterpret what a survey is. Mm -hmm. right. For example, um, the survey, your, your analysis of 74%, might mm -hmm. simply be that 74% of the persons who watch that show, like for example, if I go to a church right. and ask, okay, um, how many people think that the devil exists? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get 95%, mm -hmm. but if I go to an atheist gathering and I ask mm -hmm. the same thing, so there are things called controls, and so we can't take those things, and I would assume that you would agree with me, that if you were to take them for anything other than responses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you're setting yourself up for a little bit of disappointment at the very least. Well, Kevin, I will say to you that I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> I premise my, my presentation by saying it's not scientific. Yeah. You can ascribe to it mm -hmm. whatever you want to, but in the absence of any real scientific survey, then mm -hmm. that is the best thing that we have. I would say that um, at some point, T in the past, um, a couple of my colleagues had embarked on scientific polling. Mm -hmm. But we have seen, I have seen, and I've asked around, has anybody seen the results of those scientific polls that's supposed to have been accompanying the whole ICJ conversation? Mm -hmm. And nobody has. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not. My view is that if it has been done, and I believe it has, and it was showing a strong yes, I believe that that would have been used in the quote-unquote GOB education slash propaganda campaign. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that whatever that scientific poll is saying, it is not a celebratory mm -hmm. outcome for the GOB. That's my view. I could be I, wrong. Let me, okay. I asked Isani this question this morning, um, and we were discussing it. Why May 8th? Why, why in your guesstimation, did the government put the new date to May 8th as opposed to maybe a month down the road or two months down the road or quicker or shorter? Well, this is only speculative, obviously, um, because the, the man to ask would have been uh, the Prime Minister and or his cabinet cohorts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that May 8 is fast enough for him. We have to recall. Because April 10th has already we, Yeah, <laughs> we have to recall that <laughs> April 10th should have been the day. Yeah. Um, from the standpoint of supply demand, mm -hmm. I believe the demand for information to elucidate those things that are still not fixed in people's mind, mm -hmm. we would have needed more time. Not only on the information <coughs> side, but remember there's an accompaniment of people that have been um, disenfranchised, so to speak, mm -hmm. even within the, the government's own machinery mm -hmm. of re-registration. Of re and so uh, my, my view was that um, post April 10, I thought that whatever came would have been challengeable mm -hmm. from a legal standpoint. And I would have expected that perhaps the opposition would have gone there. And maybe they will. I also expected that it would not have been May 8. I think it's really a rust star. Why the rust star? Mm -hmm. And I suspect that you cannot discount the fact that there's a geopolitical side to this. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? And that geopolitical side is mm -hmm. saying that there are partners in this equation. Mm -hmm. And those partners are obviously the two contesting parties, which is obviously Belize and Guatemala. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind that since 1859, 
this has been accompanied by the forces of the United States, mm -hmm. Great Britain. It has morphed into a sort of world community, mm -hmm. as in the UN. And now we have the OAS. But keep in mind that the major players, the Brits and the Americans, are pretty much still engaged. And so one would have to understand that the government is dancing to the tune mm -hmm. of its geopolitical partners. And why do I say this? Well, one of the evidences, you gentlemen, I am sure would be acquainted with the press release, the joint press release between mm -hmm. the EU, yeah. the US, and um, the OAS. Mm -hmm. uh, this is proof for me that, yes, there's a geopolitical hand at play. Remember what got us to 1968. It was basically the Americans and the British basically saying, let us try and solve this. We couldn't solve it in 1931. The Guats walked away and said to Britain, well, you're not really not coming. Remember the Guats walked away from mm -hmm. the demarcation of the borders. And they walked away because they were saying to the Brits, you owe us money. And the Brits were saying, really? I don't think so. Fast forward to 1968, really 1965, leading up to 1968, and there was a formulation that basically said, um, Belize, you will be called Belize, you will mm -hmm. have your political independence, but you're really a surrogate state of Guatemala. And people obviously rebelled. Mm -hmm. um, Webster Proposal 2.0, 1981, the same formulation came along, people rebelled, and now we are at 2008 plus, Mm -hmm. where it's really the same formulation except that we are now saying, listen, um, we don't know where the borders are, mm -hmm. and we'll be asking the ICJ to make that determination. But really the formulation is one of great risks for Belize. And remember, there's no going back. Once you have said yes, then um, it's off to the races. So let me ask you this. With the abundance of legal opinions that have been put forward on the matter, and I use the term abundance loosely, mm -hmm. do you believe that enough has been put forward in terms of the risks for either litigating and, of course, what is at stake, depending on the outcome of the dispute, should it be adjudicated by the World Court? Well... I'll answer the last one first. Mm -hmm. Should it be adjudicated by the World Court? Remember that um, Belize has casted itself as this helpless little nation mm -hmm. at the mercy of this Goliath called Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And so for small nations, obviously diplomacy and avenues of courts become relevant and in that context, the Belize Peace Movement is saying, yes, the courts are relevant, not under the current prescription, though, mm -hmm. for two reasons. One, once Belizean territory is at stake, this is definitely a no-no. Once Belizean rights is at stake for the Belize Peace Movement, it's definitely a no-no. Under the current formulation, um, the lessons of Guyana mm -hmm. in its struggle against Venezuela is similar to Belize. You see what the Guyanese have said? They have said there are specific questions mm -hmm. that they want the ICJ to answer. We can construct, and I have constructed some of the things that we want the ICJ to answer. So, mm -hmm. under the current formulation, no. Can I ask this question? Um, because the, 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 the players on the chessboard have moved. Um, some of them have moved from behind the, the, the line of pawns. They've, they've jumped out from behind the line of pawns. And I, I don't, and I don't think that we've appreciated what has happened um, recently. My question is this, and I want you to help me to walk through this. Mm -hmm. We received a letter from three superpowers, or three um, very powerful yeah. entities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The United States, um, OAS, and the, the EU. The, the EU, um, 
and and the, the OS. and the OS. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the, doesn't the EU include some of? Doesn't include Spain. Spain is a member of the EU. Am I right? Yes, as far as I know. And the British are part of the mm. of that letter as well. Correct. Well, they they, they were. I there's think a break, Brexit there, there, no, that, that one has. No, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking Brexit. separately. <laughs> we have the EU, which mm -hmm. includes Spain, mm -hmm. who has some say or some historical input mm -hmm. into the dispute that we're having here. Correct? Because uh, um, well, well, it's relevant from the standpoint of colonialism. Yes, obviously. from the colonial standpoint. Mm -hmm. And then we have the British, who have a direct say and influence in terms of testimony and evidence. Correct? They have so, uh, so we have these two parties, kind of like parents, mm -hmm. who have an input to make in terms of the differendum, mm -hmm. who have said go to court. But will these same two parties be called upon to provide some sort of evidence in the case? And why is it that they have not tried separately to assist in it? Mm -hmm. Do you understand my question? Yes. You, you sent a letter, but you can do more than a letter because you have a substantial... Are you putting that in the context that we're former colonies of both Britain and Spain? Well, more so evidentially, because mm -hmm. I look at it as a court, and I, I have to confess I don't know exactly how what the dynamics of it is, but evidence has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have material evidence that you can provide. Listen, it used to belong to me one spell in Upper, and uh, I was there at one point in time in Upper. So, in, in addition to just writing a letter, I'm saying that they have more of an evidential operational stake or influence in what's going on. So have we just allowed them to get away with just sending a letter? Well, remember the um, Kevin and Isani, mm -hmm. that the Brits are some of the greatest diplomats on the planet. Mm -hmm. And I'm quoting Miss Sandra Cowie, and she has basically said something I much agree with. At the end of the day, the interest of the British is trade. Mm -hmm. They are looking at this thing, obviously, from the standpoint of trade and trade economic economics. development. So, yeah. I'm, 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 so having said mm -hmm. that, though, um, I would say that really, um, I'll go back to Belize's march to independence. There were a number of resolutions leading up to 1981. Mm -hmm. One of the most powerful resolutions that came our way was to say that this dispute will continue. The parties to this dispute must be aware that the solution to this dispute must not injure, undermine, or jeopardize the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Belize. Mm -hmm. I question, how did we reach this point from that very, very robust condition that said, Britain, you, Guatemala, and, in, and inferentially Belize, go and solve this, but it must not jeopardize uh, the territorial integrity among other things of Belize. And where are we right now? We have the government, none le no less than the government, which is the arbiter of public policy, saying mm -hmm. we are willing to go to court. And what we are taking to court is really the entire territory of Belize. And we are taking this to court, keeping in mind that a part of Guatemala's animus mm -hmm. and angst is that Britain owes them something. Mm -hmm. And we are basically functionally putting up our entire territory at stake that oh, could something. be used as compensation. Mm -hmm. And so philosophically and conceptually, this is not wise. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the issues that we raise. I'll go back to a point that you made earlier, that we have an overabundance mm -hmm. of legal opinion. When you read through those legal opinions, there's always a caveat. Mm -hmm. This is our opinion, but remember there are these other things. They always say, like, for example, the last one that, well, the second to the last one that came in, mm -hmm. the Siani, who basically said, well, remember, I am rendering these opinions on the assumption that the judges would rule a certain way. Mm -hmm. But remember that this is just an opinion 
and this is not really me in the seat of a judge. So as the... Uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. but I just want to continue by saying mm -hmm. the, one of the most informed opinion that I've read mm -hmm. was by this guy, William Bianchi, mm -hmm. going back to 1859. William basically said, Guatemala has a, a weak mm -hmm. situation. It, it, it doesn't have its uh, good legs to stand on. He has found some irregularities there. And one of the irregularities that he found was that if Guatemala can posit, if Guatemala can access hard evidence mm -hmm. that Spain gave her the right mm -hmm. to Belize, then his entire thesis would have to be revised. Mm -hmm. I do not believe, based on the the tact taken by the government that is a yes to the ICJ, we have not given ourselves the, the, the sort of latitude to have the analysis mm -hmm. and the public conversation and engagement that we should be having. If there's a risk here, let us identify that risk and let us talk through it, let us analyze it and let the chip fall where they may. Which brings me to this question. Do you believe that perhaps the government has up until this point been disingenuous in terms of putting forward to the people of Belize that this is essentially a watertight, ironclad case to put forward before the International Court of Justice. Considering the fact that there has been legal opinion after legal opinion, most recently there was... Um, excerpts of legal opinions being read by Senator Eamon Courtney right. in the Senate last Monday, referencing positions taken by senior counsel Dennis Barrow at the time, right. and of course the late Gian Gandhi. Um, yeah. Do you think, in light of all of what I've shared with you and what has been made public, that GOB has been a bit sketchy in its position well, there? Well, I would say that they have been negligent. Mm -hmm. They have been irresponsible. They have been compromised. Mm -hmm. And I am being uh, kind here mm -hmm. in charitable. terms of using those. Mm -hmm. I'm being charitable here. Mm -hmm. uh, Isani, you have potential. And you have potential. If I had the sword to knight you as a part of the Belize Peace Movement, I would do that. Einstein has basically said that intelligence is not really coming up with smart answers. It's really asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And I think that you have really hit the nail on the head in terms of saying, listen, um, what is obvious is that the government campaign is really one of selective amnesia. Mm -hmm. We will tell you the parts of the story. There's a universe of facts. Mm -hmm. There's this table here. And there are these various facts in sets and subsets. And the government has said, we will tell you about this fact. Mm -hmm. And we will tell you about this fact in their fact-only campaign. Mm -hmm. They will not tell you about the universe of the facts. Mm -hmm. Because that might put you in a position where you begin to ask the obvious. Mm -hmm. Is Guatemala really going to court to lose? Mm -hmm really know. And you know why I'm saying this? Whenever that conversation comes up, they interview everybody else except a Guatemalan. <laughs> they have interviewed Ambassador Rosado. What do you think Ambassador Rosado, and obviously Ambassador Rosado is a paid operative, and he said what he needs to say. Mm -hmm. But I am saying, really, ask Carlos Moreno, ask Jimmy Morales, as I spoke about the issue of the broader geopolitics, mm -hmm. you would know that we have been outmaneuvered by Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Really, Guatemala has basically agreed with us that we would go to simultaneous referendum. Look at, look at what has happened in mm -hmm. the interest game. We have, at some point, they said, no, we won't. They actually amended the compromise. Mm -hmm. To allow, that, for that to allow them to, to have mm -hmm. referendum in series. Mm -hmm. And so they go first, and now we're in a position where 
the international community is saying to us, well, let me rephrase that. There are elements of the international community that is saying to us, well, get this thing over and done with. That mm -hmm. is the official writ. But I would like to think that the, the pressures being brought on we know who mm -hmm. is basically saying, because he himself has said, or elements of the cabinet has said, or favorite foreign minister has said, if you want to vote, no. Guatemala will invade. If you don't say no, no crazy. If you don't say no, you are not learned. Mm -hmm. And so we are saying, but this is exactly the chess game that Guatemala has been playing on us. Remember what Guatemala has been saying, you know. Guatemala has been saying all along, we do not recognize the independence or the territorial integrity of Belize. You know what they got Belize to do in 1992? They basically said, listen, we have no international agreement or no bilateral agreement between Belize and Guatemala. Belize, let us structure this thing. Sign here. And you know what Belize is signed to? There's no internationally recognized borders between Belize and Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And now you know where we are? We are in a compromise that basically is asking the court to make a determination mm -hmm. of where the borders exist. And we are asking the court to assign any rights that may accrue from that construct. No, I, I, I know that there are some ES campaigners out there who cringe at your last statement that somehow will really send away its borders and will say that it is a factoid, that it's not true. And I will leave them to deal with that because I'm sure they have some response to that. Right. But my final question, because we're completely out of time, mm -hmm. is the referendum is May 8th. That is the date that is set for it. All right. Anybody now who wants to impact that vote has to move now. But my question is, has everything that could possibly be said already been said? So now we're in a point where we're simply rehashing, regurgitating, repeating, and boring the Belizean people it has the opposite effect that people start being tuned off and they now start to go on what their original gut feeling was. Is it that everything has been said? I would have to say to you that you obviously do not agree with me when I said that there's a substantive amount of the demography that does not know. Mm -hmm. And they do not know <coughs> because they do not have information. Mm -hmm. But to your point, I would say to you right now, Mr. Kevin, that... Um, actually, what I, what I have in my hand here, <laughs> actually, no. What I have, I have out of the document that I mm -hmm. call the Belize-Guatemala conundrum and the inconvenient truth, and it's asking all the hard questions. Mm -hmm. One of the part of it that people have found much favor with is a risk analysis that I've done. It was a bit cursory in that mm -hmm. document. I did a presentation at the UB Forum about two weeks ago. I am now in the process, um, Kevin, of teasing out the risk analysis and I'm expanding on it. I have said on this show that really, um, in terms of the quantitative aspect of it, if you're going to court in a $3 billion economy, the risk to Belize with a 5% Guatemala win mm -hmm. is 75 million units. That jumps out at people. Um, I was on CREM uh, perhaps a month ago, and a guy came up to me and said, you know what, Mr. Maivit, I was going, me and my family were going to vote, yes, but just the way you break that down, I will vote. No, so to your point, Kevin, knowledge is dynamic. You mm -hmm. never reach a plateau. And so everything that could be said has not been said. As we speak, mm -hmm. I am going through uh, the, 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 the opinions of, of uh, Mr. Sobel, mm -hmm. and I'm obviously plowing through some of the other opinions in terms of my paper. So, well, well I, look, I look forward to hearing new stuff because some of the old stuff already is becoming repetitive. But I can't wait until you have put that information and other people to put new information on the table. But that's all the time we have for this segment. 
We're going to ask you to kindly stay tuned with us on the other side of this commercial break. We're going to be um, talking about the philosophy of suffering. So stay tuned.